Okay, gonna do an oil change on the F-150 today, and it doesn't fit in the garage as you can see. Um, I don't know if you can get way up in there, you could probably see that if I try pulling it any further, it would probably hit. Um, it looks further away than it really is, just because I'm parked in like that right now. You see up there? Yeah, it would definitely hit. So this is kind of what I do to get it in there. Because it's just started sprinkling, so I want to get in the, uh, the garage here. <clears throat> but this potentially could be my last oil change on this thing. So, now the Raptor, I'm sure, is probably going to have the same oil filter configuration and everything. Where it's on the front of the engine in the middle, and it's a pain he has to get to. So, uh, I'm going to walk you through that, doing the oil change on this thing, and then uh, we'll go from there. I'm going to drain the old pan, and I'm going to throw it away, because that thing was falling apart and started leaking, and I just bought a brand new one. Uh, so I recycle my oil, I'll take it back to the auto parts place. But uh, yeah, see the oil change oil this thing. I use Mobile One and Fram uh, synthetic filters. Someone mentioned using WIC. I'm a, maybe I'll try that, but as of right now, I bought a case of Fram. And I think it's the same filter on the Raptor. But uh, yeah, go to rockauto.com and uh, you can order them by the case for a hell of a lot cheaper. Or even individual, a hell of a lot cheaper than you do in the auto parts store. That's generally what I do is I order them by the case or at least 12 at a time. Um, I even did it for the Audi over there. The same thing. Uh, the Audi or the BMW? I don't remember. They both take that filter, cartridge filter. I think it might have been the BMW I did that. But uh, let's get going on this. Okay, so let's go underneath the truck. Um, I don't remember what size the drain plug is. I work on so many different vehicles, so I don't remember. So let's take a look. So let's get under here. I don't know if you're able to see very well. Basically what I'm looking at. So it's got a BDS lift kit. Now let me move you around. Forgot, you have to go from the side. It's on the passenger side behind the engine. So let's go over here. The pan will go from the front. There, now you can see it. So it is right there. And if I were to take a guess, that's a 15 millimeter. So let me get the drain pan over here, get it in position, and we'll get a 15 millimeter. Okay, so it's a, it's a 15 millimeter. Got my, got my ratchet wrench to position the, position the drain pan so it doesn't dump it anywhere. Let me set you guys up here for a second. So you take that out. And you can see it right there. Alrighty. Got my flashlight just in case. And whenever I'm done here, I do a visual inspection of everything around. Just to make sure everything's going good. And since I don't drive this thing, well, I don't drive a lot of miles, period, but. I only do this once a year. That's kind of what the timing's been going. And so this is really tight. Oh, here we go. Plus, I don't want to bust my knuckle on the sway bar. So I just drove up, returned the old oil. This is kind of the process. I recycled the old oil. That allows this thing to get hot, nice and hot. I'm going to change the oil. And this is kind of a, a gamble at where this shit's gonna go. Cause just between the lift kit and drop brackets and just the way this shit flies, it always makes a mess. So I'm a feeling I'm gonna get full of oil again, which is why I have my rag sitting here. Yep. See, it makes a big mess every freaking time. That magnetic drain plug and there's nothing on it, so that's pretty cool. Look at that. Squirt. Shit. Everywhere. Making a big old mess.
My last truck I made a uh, sheet metal drain pan just because it was really, really bad. This one's just a sway bar. This is I don't do this very often, I kind of forgot about it. How bad it really was. Yeah, I'll move the truck out of the way and I'll use some brake clean and clean all this stuff off the cement. Think about it. This just adds a little bit of rust protection. <laughs> I'm gonna sit there and let that drain for a while. And then we'll do a little, I'm gonna get some more clean rags. And wipe up a little more of this stuff. <clears throat> Okay, so let's do a walk around. Well, visual inspection, so to speak. So as you can see, there's my rockers. Right up in there. For a truck six years old, six winters, there's virtually nothing. No rust, no nothing. Everything you see is from fluid film. I'll go back from this side. Over here, from the this is looking from the front back at the rocker down there. That's all fluid film, all the wetness. I sprayed it on there last November. All I did is do a little touch up, but I did a really deep spray a year ago. And you can see up in here, it penetrates and keeps everything like with a waxy film on it. You can see there's a little bit of corrosion from before. I just started using fluid film like two years ago. You can see. That's just from this past winter. So usually I go through and I'll touch up all that stuff, clean everything up, you know, hit it with a little bit of uh, wire brush, touch up the paint on it, and then resaturate the fluid film. This past winter I only used a spray can, I did a few areas. I never did the axle or anything. But uh, yeah. Looks pretty good. <clears throat> when I tighten the drain plug, right here, all I do is I give it a little crank. Not a lot. I would say 20 foot pounds maybe. I give it a little snug. And that's it. Then I leave it. It's got a rubber gasket on it, so that seals it up good, and uh, I've never had an issue with it that way. All right, oil filter time. Okay, we're at the front of the vehicle. The oil filter is on the driver's side. Inside this little panel right here. Let's see if there's one fastener here. It's kind of hard to see. There's uh, two little twist fasteners here. There's two over there, one over, two over here. Pull it down. Gives you a little bit of an access window. So, the quarter turn. So, now, I lost my flashlight. So, 
So now the panels drop down. You can see it's up in here. Way back in there. I don't know if you can barely see it. That's that uh, neural. I, I got the light fly, shined right on it right now. The neural looking piece. That's like the grippy end of the fram filters. This is a so called little drain catch thing. There's two sides to this. So depending on how the vehicle is sitting, it's either going to drain out this one or drain out the other one. And the oil pan, your drain pan, is usually not wide enough to catch both. So you got to take a stab and see which way it's going to go every single time you change oil. It's a pain in the ass. But now I'm going to get a wrench up in there and get this oil filter off. You got to almost do it blind. So I'm going to kind of reach around, reach through here, right this area right here, and then go up there and do that. All right, I'm gonna get doing that. Okay, well that wasn't fun. I spent probably 20 minutes looking for my stupid oil filter wrench. Because last summer I went through and organized my cabinets and moved things around. And I couldn't figure out where I left it because it wasn't where my toolbox where I normally put it. So I just ended up going all around to the last places I may have used it. Um, and I finally found it stupid but whatever so here's the new filter put a little bit of oil on there from the other filter around the rubber seal it's right here so it's the XG10575 the ultra guard or ultra synthetic filters you get you get them from a lot cheaper on uh, rock auto but uh, we're gonna go put that in there and then uh, basically hand tighten it and we're ready to fill it up back with, <laughs> fill it back up with oil so yeah that was frustrating. <clears throat> okay, so the oil fills on the is right here. I gotta get a stool because oh, I'm six foot tall. I'm standing in the truck. And I can't reach the oil fill cap, nor the dipstick that's actually sitting, which I can't even see the dipstick right now. I thought it was on this side, on the passenger side, but I don't remember. It's on the driver's side somewhere. Get down by the oil fill cap. I'm gonna get a stool. Well, we were cleaning the funnel out from when I uh, drained the old oil back into the five quart containers that I get the oil in for Mobile One. Um, <clears throat> I think after this, I'm going to start using AMS oil on every vehicle because I became a distributor. So I get it for a really good price shipped to my door. And I can start, uh, yeah, the dipstick is way down here. I can start to uh, sell it to other people around me. So I'll just pop the funnel in here, the large mouth funnel, and the dipstick's right down here, way down there. And obviously I use the full container. When I uh, get the AMS oil, I get in a four cart container. So with this large mouth, it's much easier. Now make sure these little foil stuff doesn't fall down on your oil. That would really suck. So this is the fun part. Getting it to pour without pouring everywhere. That wasn't too bad. You got a couple drops. Obviously I can't open the hood all the way where the, where the truck's sitting. It's raining outside right now, which sucks. But it's better than freezing. It's like almost 50. This truck's like clockwork on the oil change. 
once a year, which is about 5,000 miles on this thing, which is why I use full synthetic. It doesn't call for it, but I use it. I've always liked using full synthetic. I can honestly say I've had issues with regular oil, but I've never had issues with, with synthetic oil. The cover has a little tray, a little drip tray, so it makes it kind of nice. Kind of just wipe it up. The engine cover, that is. <clears throat> I believe this takes six quarts. This one right here already has two quarts missing. Or actually four quarts missing. I'm going to dump about a quart of this in there and then start it. And then check the oil after it gets pumped through the filter. It's about a quart. Sometimes wearing hats working on cars sucks because you bump your head. But better than bumping your head not wearing a hat. Alright, let's start it up. Now obviously you know I'm trading this thing in, but you know what? It's due for the oil change. I'm not going to just reset it and leave it. Because I'm not that type of person. So I do trade it in. I will tell them I just changed the oil. So they won't need to. It's kind of hard to see the tube down here. Calls for about a half a quart, it looks like. So six and a half quarts. About a half quart.
Oh, that's good. Yeah, this hat's a little too loose. I gotta get a different hat. But this is a trash hat for working on a car, so. Alright. So I finished cleaning up my mess. Um, and that's it. I back the truck out and clean all the oil off the floor over there. Use a little bit of brake cleaning, it cleans right off. But uh, oil chain's done. I gotta do the reset on it, and I think it's just as simple as going on the system and doing it. That's from what I remember. Uh, let me look that up and I'll, uh, I'll end the video on resetting the oil. Okay, oil life reset. Um, we're going to scroll through the menu here. I'm not going to start, I'm just going to turn it to the on position. And then we're going to scroll through the menu and reset it. So. Okay, I'm going to go through there. S information, I think. System check. Okay. 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 Uh, let's see. Doors, battery, fuel. Settings. Let's try settings. Vehicle. Oil life reset. Back. I'm going to hold it. Reset complete. Oil life reset done. So that's it. It looks like the battery's going out on this thing because I got that warning. But uh, maybe just because it's been sitting for a while. But it is six years old. That's a long time for a battery. But thanks for watching.